Okay, so I'm gonna start my presentation here on media and crime. My name is Raquel Robles. Let's begin. First of all, on the agenda, I'll be explaining my knowledge on the influence mass media has on crime and deviance. Does media create fear of crime in society? Well, there are controversial views, but overall, I'd say that the media does have a big effect on how we perceive crimes and violence. Um, like we learned in class and in the readings, overall, there's a lot of fear-mongering tactics that the mass media creates to instill fear in the people. How do perceptions of crime influence reinforce social labels and stereotypes? Well, we'll learn a little bit about that. What are some important concepts, ideas, John Cura and the Bureau of Justice Statistics share? And we'll discuss theoretical perspectives. Next, introduction, the influence of mass media. So, in my opinion, mass media definitely has a lot of influence on how crime is perceived. Most media, or better yet, most Americans learn about crime through media. Watching more violent television shows and just TV in general does cause more people to distrust others and increases our fear of violent crime. People that spend more hours watching television are more likely to distrust distrust others among being fearful of violent crimes against them. Compared to reality, the world isn't as violent as it is portrayed. Cultivation theory claims people may believe the programs they watch are a reality, but in fact, it's not as the world isn't as violent as it's portrayed on mass media. Watching local news causes more fear than national news. Does mass media create unwanted fear in society? Overall, it is better to play it safe than sorry. The media does tend to dramatize and use fear-mongering tactics for views. And that does not negate the fact that true crimes exist and are committed daily. However, they are not always as extremely violent or gruesome as they might be portrayed. History of crime. Since the beginning of humanity, we've had an innate fear of violence. If we go back to the caveman times, I'm sure they were fearful and protective of their people, of their own, um, wanting to protect what's theirs and what they've nurtured. Decades of research tell us that there is a high intense of fear in women, older individuals, and in perceived neighborhoods that uh, crime rates also affect. So basically what I'm saying here is that crime rates in communities do have an effect on the people that live in those communities and uh, people going into those communities will be aware of uh, crimes committed there if they're especially on the news local or national fear of crime alters an individual's habits by causing them to want to stay indoors more often than not so this is common uh, if we tend to fear what's outside what's going outside what can go wrong we may not want to go outside at all especially with the fear mongering tactics that the mass media creates in this day and age, much of an individual's views are shaped by what they see and hear as it pertains to media or any news source. 
a word that uh, we learned upon reading is mean world syndrome. It was a term coined by experts in their field to explain how much influence today's day and age media has on one to the point that it shifts our whole perception of reality into thinking that everyone is just mean and out to get us. Moving on, the John, what John Kura had to say. An ancient proverb says, a fish rots from the head first, meaning it all starts in an individual's mind. CEOs and people in high positions have a great deal of power and in doing so can use it to help or harm others. We live in an asymmetric society where powerful organizations hold a lot of power compared to any other ordinary individual. Powerful groups are able to influence laws and normalize activities that make them legitimate. The status quo plays a role in keeping the rich richer and everyone else just getting by. The meaning of deviance is different depending on the environment and the culture in which one is raised. And an example of that is someone that grew up in a violent, abusive upbringing. They might think that's normal until they learn otherwise. Uh, the Bureau of Justice Statistics, a few standout statistics that I read about on the website. According to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, we see that in 2022, there was a 2% increase of prisoners from previous years. There was a 5% increase of female prisoners from 2021 to 2022. And the website also explains how they collect information and compile statistics very well. The information was mainly estimates but very close to the real thing which it is the real thing but overall an estimate theoretical perspectives that we learned about are the functionalist perspective the belief that deviance plays an important role in society an example of how every part of a particular mechanism contributes to the way the whole works an example of that is the way the human body is all held together by a, a system everything works together to keep us alive and moving the conflict theory views social and economic factors as causes of crime and deviance and symbolic interactionism the idea of how social groups and societies come to the idea that certain thoughts or behaviors are deviant and my next page is are my references i hope that went well and thank you uh, for your time.